Uh, Richard Carranza here with the uh, Houston Energy Industry News, and today I am interviewing Andrew Bruce of Data Gumbo. He is the CEO, and uh, Andrew, it's a pleasure to have you here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for making time. Why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at Data Gumbo? Oof, that could take a while. Um, my name is Andrew Bruce. I'm originally from the UK, actually specifically the Isle of Man. Came to uh, America to study computer science back in 1982. Um, been involved in the oil and gas business since I arrived in Houston in 1989. And uh, started Data Gumbo in December 9th, 2015, although the company was incorporated in September 19th, 2016. We started out as a, as a, as a data platform for aggregating data across multiple different systems uh, because prior to that, I was involved with the uh, autonomous drilling system, building an autonomous drilling system for National Wabaco. We were implementing some uh, programs for um, the, the space industry, and uh, the the algorithm, algorithms we were implementing needed data from multiple different sources from companies that didn't like each other very much. Um, <laughs> so we were building an IoT platform to uh, satisfy the need to aggregate data and make it available so you can do, do interesting stuff like machine learning or AI. Um, and um, so that's why actually why we're called Data Gumbo, because you get a whole bunch of data from a bunch of different places, yeah. put it in the pot, stir it up, make it taste good, you get Data Gumbo. Um, yeah. And along, along the way, we discovered uh, that we could, the industry got a problem with essentially trusts between uh, two or more parties um, and uh, inefficiency and, and payments. And so we we kind of took the blockchain concept and tied it to the IoT platform concept. And so we created blockchain as a service. So what we provide is an industrial blockchain as a service network for uh, improving the efficiency of the industry, whether it be from uh, payments or provenance of, uh, of equipment or, or, or reporting and uh, use it to improve the efficiency of the industry. So in a nutshell, that's who we are and who I am and where we came from. Yeah, I've done some study on the subject of blockchain, and uh, I want to get into that later. I guess what's primarily on my mind right now is your press release regarding uh, the transportation of produced water. Yep. And um, I think that's really interesting because most of the applications that I'm in, become familiar with that has to do with utility metering, like electricity or something like that. And I know that blockchain is uh, used throughout the whole process uh, from metering to uh, verifying different things and then finally confirm payment, you know. And so in a nutshell, I, I, have, your, um, I have your diagrams right here. And I'm going to post these on the web as well. And it's uh, some pretty complicated stuff there. Uh, but in, in a nutshell, I was wondering if you could describe how is blockchain used to verify the, meet, the, the metering actually and custody transfer from the wellhead owner to the trucking guy who then has to blockchain it again to the disposal guy and then the disposal guy has to contact the, um, uh, what do they call it? The own, the own, the original owner and verify payment or something like that. Now how does, how does that work in a, in a nutshell? Well, you have to compare the before process and the after process. One of those diagrams you, you just showed me does that. So the way it works today is, uh, Trucking companies uh, uh, are dispatched or arrive at a, a well site um, to pick up wastewater. Um, 
and they once they pick up the water they sign a paper ticket and um, they take a copy and the well site takes a copy and then they go and dispose of that water and it's salt water disposal well um, sign another ticket and the salt water disposal site and the trucking company takes another ticket and then the trucking company um, and the salt water disposal company send invoices invoices start flowing between all different participants and inevitably the volumes that are picked up and delivered don't match and so the once the invoices start arriving and people start trying to reconcile the invoices there are mismatches between between the various volumes um, either picked up or delivered and so then a dispute process starts and so then um, delays start happening arguments start happening hopefully it, hopefully it doesn't end up in court but sometimes it ends up in court and it's all a very, very slow process fraught with opportunities for contract leakage, um, slow payment, um, and expense. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we are going to we're going to measure exactly how much water is picked up uh, from the from the well site. We're going to measure how much water is put on the truck, and we're going to measure how much water uh, is put into the saltwater disposal well, all with sensors, and we're going to do a three-way three-way match or a two-way match if if one of those pieces of data is missing. And as long as those data match within a tolerance agreed by the various participants, an automated payment is made between the oil company and the trucking company, and there is no delay, uh, there there's no reconciliation because you're all looking from the same piece of data, and the key is that that the legal contract, the smart contract, which is just the computer program which executes the terms of the contract, the base data, um, the results of the calculation and the payment are all stored in a block. And the block is, is a block in the blockchain for the oil company, is a block in the blockchain for the saltwater disposal company, and there's a block in the blockchain for the trucking company. And all those blocks are guaranteed by identical because they cryptic cryptographically hashed, not with just with the data that's in that block, but with the previous data in the previous blocks. So no party can unilaterally change any of the data in the blocks. So you've got a system of trust between multiple different participants, and that's what enables you to make an automated payment. So in a nutshell, that's the process. You take a, a manual, multi-step, multi-month process, and you turn it into a daily process. Is, is blockchain used in verifying the metering at all? No. No, so the verifying of the meter happens when you do a match between the, the various measurements. So you measure point A, point B, point C, point D, wherever it is, and then you do a match to see whether the, the measurements are the same between different systems. And if they're the same within a, a measure, measure of tolerance, which the participants have agreed to, then that is considered valid data within the, the within the realms of reason for for the uh, for the contract execution, and then that is used to trigger the terms of the smart contract, and that's where it goes into the blockchain at that point. Are, are you involved with the metering technology at all? Nope, we use whatever meters are already there. So the whole SCADA system and the transmission and whatnot is is done by other people. Yep. And um, so the, the actual uh, confirmation of ledgers, I guess you might say, that everybody has, um, you would come in at that point when it's going to be verified payment. Is that pretty much when the data gumbo comes in? No. So we what we did do is we provide a, a blockchain network. So we have this infrastructure, blockchain infrastructure. So the operator, the oil, oil company has got ledger, the saltwater disposal company has got a ledger, and the trucking company has got a ledger, and so they're all running ledgers all the time, and there is a smart contract uh, executing which is connected to the SCADA system, to the tank system, to the meter systems, the saltwater disposal systems, whatever systems are out there. So Data Gumbo or partners or the companies write connectors to all those different SCADA systems so that we're monitoring constantly what's happening in the physical world. 
we're looking for a trigger. So the trigger is, okay, was the delivery made? Was the delivery picked, dropped off? If it was, then what's the state? You know, do, where, did, where was it picked up from? Where was it dropped off to? These two match, do they match exactly? Yes or no, once that trigger is executed, then new, a new block is created in each of the ledgers and you, now you've got, um, you've got a confirmed transaction. So we provide all the infrastructure for the blockchain. We provide the, um, the, the portal that people can log on to see uh, the payments and the, the status of all the transactions. We provide the, the IoT platform for collecting the data and we provide the, well, we help do the programming or to get the data connectors to connect from the SCADA system. And then there's also a smart contract execution environment that these smart contracts run in and we provide that. And then somebody writes a smart contract. It could be us, it could be a consulting company, it could be the oil company, but somebody writes that smart contract. In the case of the press release you referred to, um, the consortium actually owns the IP to that, that smart contract, not that they want to, because they want to be able to reuse it for each of the different participants in the consortium. Well, the um, when I was doing research on blockchain, um, it was with regards to cryptocurrency. Yep. And man, I read some very disturbing stuff in there. You know, um, something I read some article somewhere that said that in a year. The amount of energy used in uh, cracking the code is equal to the amount of electricity used by the country of Ireland or something of that nature, you know, and that uh, people were quit doing it because they couldn't pay for their electricity bills anymore at home. Uh, people were buying big warehouses full of uh processors in there, uh, these sophisticated cooling systems and whatnot. Uh, but I, I talked to one of your personnel. At, I can't remember where the conference was or what it was even about. Um, but I talked to one of your girls up there, and she says, well, you know, Richard, uh, you don't have to go through that kind of computation in this case because we can have private networks instead of putting it out there for the general public to, to, to crack the code we can do it privately and reduce the computations uh, I still don't really get how that works now my understanding is that for cryptocurrency they do a hash thing and this hash thing um, I think is 16 numbers and it's I think it's a, just a standard hash that we use for to verify uh, ISOs that we download ver verify it's the right ISO you know and you put the hash in there oh, they match so it must be right um, how does it work in your situation how do you reduce computation and, and become energy efficient and what kind of is it eight numbers or who's in the network who gets in there and gets to crack the code and so forth and so on yeah, so we did prototypes with you know, the established you know, fintech blockchain technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't work for industry. So we've got to be able to store large amounts of data to, to verify the execution of, uh, of, of contracts. Um, in addition to that, nobody in industry wants anything to do with crypto currencies or tokens or anything like that. So we can't have any mining. We don't want any mining. We don't need any mining. We've got dollars or we've got euros or krona or whatever else it is. So we have no cryptocurrencies. There is no mining. So all that energy load that you're talking about doesn't apply. So um, we, we also have big blocks so we can store a massive amount of data on the blocks. So what we do is we create exactly correct. We create a, a cryptographic hash, which is basically just an encryption algorithm of the data that's in a block, and then the data that's in the chain, and that's what creates the the hash um, for that block in the chain. 
And then what we do, you're right, they're private networks. So each participant invites people in their supply chain that they want to participate. So we don't, also, another difference is we don't have a wallet. So if you think of a cryptocurrency, you have a wallet. We don't have a wallet. We have a corporate node, which is very much more like a database administrator. So you've got a database administrator. In our case, we have a ledger administrator. And that ledger administrator provides with different roles. So you can have an asset manager, you can have an executive, you can have a all the different, you know, supply chain manager, a lawyer, different roles within your company for managing different aspects of these contracts within the company. So if you're a supply chain manager, you say, okay, I want to invite X trucking company and Y saltwater disposal company and Z um, drilling contractor. And so you invite these different participants to say, I'd like to automate this contract with this company. So it's a private network which reflects the supply chain of the company. So they invite the different participants and the different participants all get ledgers and they get copies of the blocks and they get copies of the chains. And you do a consensus algorithm saying, does the hash of this one match the hash of this one and match, match the hash of this one, which is just a comparison of three, four, five, however many participants there are hashes. So there's no computational load at all. As long as the hash matches, you've got a valid block block and you've got a valid chain and everything's good. So do you have do you have to crack the hash? No, you just, it, it is just oh. an encryption algorithm. Oh, I see. I see. So it's sort of like, uh, are you, are you yeah, familiar we, with, oh, sorry, go ahead. I mean, what you're talking about is mining. We don't do any mining. So it, it's uh, just. Uh, 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 uh. Cool. Well, you know, what, what have, are, are you familiar with Linux at all? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you'd be surprised how very my questions are answers to that. Uh, you know, when you want to download your favorite Linux, the website will give you a hash. And so you verify the ISO by putting that hash in there and hey, it matches, you know, cool. If it doesn't match, then you know somebody hacked the server and they got the firmware on that ISO, right? Uh, is that sort of the way it is? And you know, the, you you let your private people know, hey, this is the hash right here. You know, verify it and bingo, you're good. That's essentially exactly the same. Yes. Cool. I really like that. Hey, now now you got me on board. <laughs> you know, but, but before that, I was mm, not sure. You know, but with that information, I think that's great. And uh, well, hey, man, I think I've got everything I need. Um, Thank you for being with me today, and uh, this is Richard Carranza, Houston Energy Industry News, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, sir.